Hi there, I'm James Dapperty and this is Coffee and a Case Note. Today, team, we're going on an adventure to Western Australia. We have got a lender and we have got a lender that makes some loans based on valuations, right? Money changes hands, the lender's happy for the money to change hands on the in reliance upon the numbers that the valuers have given the lender. Sadly, uh, the venture doesn't go quite as the lender or indeed the borrowers had hoped. Uh, and so the lender attempts to get the money back from the borrowers. Sadly, that fails. And the lender, which is the bank, turns its attention to the valuers and says, right, we made these loans in reliance on these valuations and valuers, I'm afraid we're gonna pursue you for it. So that's the claim. What the value has then made is a cross claim against their insurer to say, well, uh, insurer, we're having a claim made against us by this bank. Uh, it's challenging our valuations. Here's the insurance policy. Why doesn't the insurer go off and fight it? And what the insurer said was, mm, not sure we're gonna do that because what we want you to do is take a look closely at the insurance policy because we say we don't have to. We say there's an exclusion that applies and we don't have to cover you in relation to this dispute. Why would the insurer say that to the valuers? Well, there's a clause in the insurance policy, right? In that clause, it says, the insurer will insure the valuers for any loss uh, if it's caused by a loan made in reliance upon a valuation <laughs> and that loan is made by a party who is not an authorised deposit taking institution supervised by APRA and the relevant loan agreement doesn't include this prudent lender term, this clause that the insurer says must be included in the contract. Let's just go through that again. It got a bit crunchy there. What the policy says is the insurer will uh, indemnify for loss, which is, sorry, I withdraw will, will not um, cover for loss, which is caused by a loan made by a party that is not an authorised deposit taking institution supervised by APRA unless there is this specified clause in the agreement. Now, in our facts, our lender was not an ADTI supervised by APRA and uh, the relevant contract, the loan contract, did not have that little clause that the insurance policy went, uh, the insurance policy said had to be in it. And what the insurer said was, easy. They're an ADTI, um, not supervised by APRA. They don't have that clause, game over. We don't have to pay. What the valuers said, the insured parties said, is wait, 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 wait. No, um, the loss itself, the claim being made against us, is not caused by the absence of that clause. That makes sense. So, insurer, you're still liable because this isn't a loss that's about them being an ADTI not supervised by APRA and uh, the loss uh, being the result of the absence of this prudent lender clause, there's whole other reasons for this loss. And as a matter of fact, the insured were right. The reason for the loss was not the absence of this term. And so what the court had to come to grip with was, was the insurer correct in saying that uh, the lender being an ADTI not supervised by APRA and without a prudent lender clause was free just to walk off and deny any coverage? Or were the insured valuers right in saying, well, hang on, the absence of that clause didn't cause our loss, and so the insurance still applies. And in short, the court found for the insured. This was a separate question determination about how the insurance policy worked, and the court found in favour of the way the insured said it worked. So even though we got a little bit crunchy and fiddly there, what I hope we set out today was that when you are dealing with decisions about exclusion clauses, the court is going to look really, really closely about um, how those insurance clauses work. Uh, it's going to look at the commercial circumstances and 
by way of footnote, one of the commercial circumstances in this decision was that APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, or whatever it's called, um, did not actually exist uh, over the entire period the insurance contract was meant to cover, right? Because the insurance policy was entered into in 2016 or so, and it was retrospective. Um, and uh, for some of the retrospective time it operated, APRA didn't even exist. So the idea that a clause, con a clause concerning APRA could have had any operation when APRA didn't even exist uh, was one which was relevant to the court in making its determination in favour of the insured. I hope you have a great day and what I look forward to is joining you again soon for another coffee and also another case note. Cheers.